Providence, Rhode Island, the 401. Not exactly a breeding ground for NBA talent, unless of course your name is Ricky Lito, a kid that grew up in a rough neighborhood on Anthony Street in the south side of Providence. I wanna be just like Ricky Lito. This kid's been saying he's going to the NBA ever since I can remember. That's like, um, that's been the major thing, like, growing up, like, people didn't believe like, it. I always had, like, I always had the confidence, like, like I was going to go to the NBA, like, I always told people, like, no matter what you say, I'm going, I'm going to be in the NBA. People don't get it, man, but when you grow up in the hood, man, a lot of love, you know what I mean? A lot of fun, you know? The kid plays sports. He's been playing sports since six years old. And I know he's pretty good at a young age. I know he's pretty good. But I never thought nothing pro or nothing. Actually, I thought he was going to go to college and play football, to be honest with you. Football was my main sport. Like, that's like what I love to do. I was Reggie like, Bush. <laughs> going out with Reggie. You know what I mean? Him growing up is just playing, playing, playing football, basketball, and running track and all that. I knew he was going to be something. Like when he was playing football, every time you always hear Ricky Lito, Ricky Lito. Football, he did baseball, but I always said that he had the body of a basketball player. I just started to really focus on basketball. Like, like I can be good at this, you know what I mean? I'm tall, like, I'm dunking. Like, I've always been like a standout player. And then, and then that's when I really started to take it like really serious and feel like, like, like I could do something with it. He went to Bishop Hendrickson to play high school basketball, a powerhouse private school that won the state championship six years in a row. I love Hendrickson. I love Hendrickson. Hendrickson was his coming out party. Everything changed for Ricky during his sophomore year at Hendrickson in 2009, where he scored 31 points with five rebounds, four assists, and two steals in the state championship game. That's when I was like, yeah, Rick's NBA, for sure. That will be his final game at Hendrickson, where every prep school in New England recruited him to play. ESPN ranked him as 21st in the nation, and he ultimately became an All-American. Despite having offers from various colleges across the country. Lito chose to commit to his hometown Providence Friars and put on for his city. I was the first person for my immediate family to graduate high school. Like, that's, that's a big deal in itself and go to college. A resilient PC fan base took another punch to the gut with yesterday's news that Ricky Lito will not be able to play this season. They like head coach Ed Cooley now pick up the pieces and get set to jump another hurdle on the road to rebuilding. J.P. Smallins has more. <laughs> He was considered a top 25 recruit by all the major recruiting services, picked by Rivals.com as the sixth best player in his class. Providence's own Ricky Lito was ready to shine as a freshman for his home team. But after yesterday's ruling by the NCAA, the guard's dream has changed. Unfortunately, he would never play a game for his hometown team. Rick was ruled academically ineligible and would declare for the NBA draft immediately after his freshman year. Oh, 
that that was that was a heartbreaker for him, man. You know, it is what it is, man. Everything happens for a reason, you know. When I couldn't play for Providence, that was just like I cried. I cried when I heard the news. Like it was so tough. Like that shit was a heartbreaker. Cause like growing up, like like wanting to play for your hometown. Like that was the whole thing. Like that's the reason I came. Like to Providence, I couldn't went to anywhere else. The reason I just wanted to play in front of my family. So like. When the NCAA hit me with the posture qualifier, I was like, like it was tough. Like I debated on what I was gonna do. Like I thought about going pro. If he had qualified to play, he'd have been the top five pick. That's how I feel. I wanted him to go back to PC. I wanted him to play. I wanted him to get on the court. Cause I know you get on the court, you'd been top 15 pick easy, easy, first round easy, without a doubt. But but people don't realize, man, on a personal level, he had to leave. He gets a lot of like like. Haters, you know what I mean? Why he leave? This and that. He didn't want to leave. I, you know, I'd be the first one to tell you that. He'll tell you that. He probably won't tell you that now, but he didn't want to leave. People think like, oh, like he just left Providence because he wanted the money. Da 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 da. da. He just left Providence because it is. Like, nah. He's like, y'all got y'all don't know me at all. I'm like, wasn't about the money. Like, I, I always was going. I always was a good good kid. I always I never wanted for anything. My grandparents had me. My dad had me. So. It was never about the money. It was just decisions, man. Many believe he had lottery talent and was the best scorer in the draft. What do you think sets him apart from other shooting guards? He can really score the basketball, and I think if you look at the high school level of the two guards coming in, they might say this was the best score. He was selected in the second round by the Milwaukee Bucks and traded to the Mavericks, a veteran team that didn't have minutes for a rookie. Rick spent much of his time in Dallas with their DB affiliate, Texas Legends. The Mavs decided to waive Lido halfway through his sophomore season to make room to acquire Amari Stoudemire. The New York Knicks saw his potential and decided to give him a chance. After signing a pair of 10-day contracts, he signed with the Knicks for the rest of the season and showed some flashes of his once promising potential. In 2015, he scored a career high 21 points with 9 rebounds. Lito's been elusive off the dribble. Ricky Lito now with 21 points for the next tonight. Here we are, the season's over. Some guys on vacation enjoying the offseason. Rick is in the gym every day more focused than ever. He knows the challenge that lies ahead. He has to have a strong summer league to stay with the Knicks and prove that he belongs in the NBA. Just working, training with my cousin Lamar Thomas. Um, that's fine, oh so coming through. But this is just the year. This is the year that everyone's gonna know me. This is the year that I'm just gonna show what type of player I am. End of the year, I kind of showed things went all right, not bad. So, it's just a building process.
as hard as this since I could remember. So like, I know it's do or die, and I know like, if I don't make it, like, what my family got to look for. So it's like, I always look like I got nothing to lose, but in actual, I got a lot to lose. Like, like my brother's in jail right now. Got my nephew, my niece, they look up to me. You know what I mean? My mom, she lives, she's still out here. It's just the principle. I gotta make it, and I, and I don't feel like everyone else has that has that chip on their shoulder that they gotta make it. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. I always try to help him my best, like um, going to school and all that. I always keep him right, always there for him. He's been working hard, staying in the gym. You know. Just trying to get to that next level. My problem. The Knicks said it, plain and simple. It's up to him. You know, the kid got all the talent in the world, man. It's up to him, man. He, he has to work. He has to do his thing, man. You know what I mean? But, you know, he works hard. My boy works hard. He, he does all the right things. Through, through all the obstacles, like, through everything, through here, through going to four different prep schools, through going to not being qualified, to not getting a chance at my first NBA team, like, I've like, and then finally getting a chance with the Knicks, and I feel like it's this had all been an obstacle. Like from from two years old, like I felt like I wasn't supposed to be here. We ain't, like we ain't supposed to make it out of here. Like there's not many people who make it out of Providence, Rhode Island.